My name is Frances Jernak, and I am a professor emeritus in the Department of Physiology and Biophysics in the School of Medicine at the University of California, Irvine. I am publishing a review and commentary titled The Pivotal Role of Aldehyde Toxicity in Autism Spectrum Disorder, The Therapeutic Potential of Micronutrient Supplementation. In my article, I review genomic studies of autism spectrum disorder and discuss competing theories that autism is caused by hundreds of genetic mutations, by altered copy numbers of genes, and or by spontaneous genetic mutations. I also review the impaired biochemical pathways so far implicated in autism, some of which are listed here. My article differs from many other articles on autism in that I also include a review of the alcoholism literature to determine if there is a possible link between autism and the inherited forms of alcoholism. I conclude that a link might exist but only for a subset of autistic individuals. However, the more significant association is that alcoholism, autism, and other neurological disorders share common toxins, known collectively as aldehydes. Much has been written about acetaldehyde, the toxic intermediate in ethanol metabolism. Much is also known about the very reactive alpha-beta unsaturated aldehydes derived from polyunsaturated lipids attacked by reactive oxygen species. These aldehydes are known to cause long-term damage in the form of chronic inflammation, autoimmune diseases, and neurodegenerative disorders such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Other sources of aldehydes often overlooked include the aldehydes generated internally during normal metabolism or by gut microflora as well as common environmental industrial and food aldehydes. Normal individuals can detoxify aldehydes before these toxins damage cells. However, individuals with genetic or abnormalities in their antioxidant defense mechanisms are harmed by an accumulation of aldehydes. Why are aldehydes so toxic? All aldehydes share a common structural feature, that of an electrophilic carbonyl group, which can react with common nucleophilic biomolecules. Aldehydes differ in the so-called R groups, which alter the rate of reaction and the targeted nucleophilic group. No matter the source of the aldehyde, the cellular damage is caused by the reactive carbonyl group. The carbonyl group reacts with very specific, accessible amino acids on proteins, thereby inactivating some proteins and disrupting cellular functions. Aldehydes also form addicts with DNA eventually causing mutations and strand breakage. Often overlooked but equally important is that aldehydes directly react with a subset of micronutrients, removing their bioavailability and causing a cascade of metabolic disturbances in the same biochemical pathways known to be defective in autism. The affected micronutrients include sulfur-containing antioxidants, vitamins B1, B6, folate, minerals zinc and possibly magnesium, possibly vitamin A, and a few other less well-characterized micronutrients. Because aldehyde-induced micronutrient deficiencies are limited to the specific cells in which the aldehydes accumulate, the deficiencies cannot be detected by traditional clinical assays which only measure an average of micronutrients in blood and urine. Pharmaceutical companies are developing targeted therapies to neutralize specific aldehydes. 
In the interim, potential therapies using commercial supplements are available. Sulfur-containing antioxidants such as N-acetylcysteine, taurine, and lupoic acid are known to neutralize most types of aldehydes. In addition to supplementing with sulfur-containing antioxidants, any therapeutic protocol also needs to replenish the micronutrients which have become deficient by aldehyde toxicity. Ample peer-reviewed data already support the hypothesis that autism symptoms mimic the symptoms of aldehyde toxicity. Nevertheless, additional research is needed to confirm the ideas. If correct, the hypothesis represents a paradigm shift in thinking about autism. Most critical is the time factor in treating aldehyde toxicity before permanent cellular damage occurs. Thus, my article discusses prenatal and postnatal risk factors which might predict autism and allow for interventions at earlier ages. Aldehyde toxicity is very likely to play a role in other neurological disorders such as schizophrenia, but the tissue specificity, concentration, and reactivity of the accumulated aldehydes is likely to be lower, so the permanent damage takes longer to accrue.